Please remember that the complete information for the class that you are about to view is at elithecomputerguy.com. Not only do we have our videos there, but we have part lists, diagrams, pictures, and even complete code examples. So if you are watching this video and you want more information, please go to elithecomputerguy.com. Welcome back. As you know, I am Eli, the computer guy, and in today's class, I'm going to be showing you how to create tables within your HTML documents. So when you're thinking about tables, kind of think of like a spreadsheet in your HTML document. Uh, so the example that we're going to be using today is basically printing out a student list. So anytime you need to print out data in a table format, uh, you would be using the table tags that I'm going to be showing you how to use today. As with everything in HTML, it's all about the tags. It's all about the tags. You open a tag, you plop something uh, down, then you close the tag, and then depending on what tags you use, that's either a hyperlink or an image or a table, right? All you have to do is keep track of the tags, open tags, plop something in, close tags, and you'll be good. Uh, the only thing that gets a little complicated in the table world is there's a lot of tags to, to keep track of, right? So you've got to open up the table tags. Your entire table is going to be within a table tag. Uh, then you have to actually have row tags. And then within the row tags, then you're going to have cell tags. And one of the issues that you can run into, especially if you're going to be printing out a lot of data, if you have a lot of columns and a lot of rows, it can get a little bit confusing just making sure that you're keeping track of all the different tags. So that's the only real warning I would tell you if you're thinking about creating tables with HTML is as long as you keep track of all the tags, you'll be fine. Uh, but it can be a little bit complicated. But anyways, with that, let's go over to the computer. I'll show you how uh, the table tags work. Again, simple, simple, simple. You just got to keep track of a whole bunch of different tags. So here we are at my demonstration system again. Uh, as always, I'm using a MacBook Pro and I am typing this out using text edit. Uh, but to be clear, all you need is a basic uh, ASCII text editor in order to write HTML. So if you're in the Windows world, you can use Notepad. Again, if in the Mac world, you can use text edit. In the Linux world, you can use gedit or vim or nano or whatever else. Um, again, you do not need a server or anything for this HTML code to run. You simply need to uh, save the file as a .htm or .html. Uh, you can save it to a desktop, and when you double click on the file, it will open up in a web browser. So you don't need anything sophisticated there. Again, with all of my examples, you will notice I rip out the HTML document formatting. There's no HTML tag, there's no head tags, there's no body tags, there's none of that. Again, I want you to focus on the demonstration that I'm showing you. If you're going to be providing something to the end user, to the client, do make sure you fully format your HTML document. But to be clear, one of the cool things about HTML is you don't have to fully format your document. You can literally just plop a table in, um, and when you double click on the file, it will the, the table will open up. So I just want you to focus on the code that I'm showing you and not get too confused. Uh, so when we take a look at this, uh, this is a basic table that I've created in HTML. Uh, when we take a look at the top, we're going to open up the table tag. Again, everything in HTML is all about the tag. So the first thing we have to do is open up the table tag and say this is going to be a table. The next thing that we're going to do if you want, this is completely optional, is we're going to have a caption. So we're going to say what this table is. So if somebody's looking at the table, what is it? So we're going to open up the caption tag. We're going to call this a student list, and then we're going to close the caption tag. So basically at the top of the table, it will simply say student list. Then we come down, and the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a header row. So with the header row, since it's a student list, we want to say what the different columns are. So the first column is name, the second column is age, the third column is gender, and the fourth column is a, a shirt size. So first thing, uh, again, we're talking about the tags. We, we have to have so many tags in order to make a, a table function. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to open up the table row tag, TR. So this is going to say for the table row, and so anything within the TR tags will be for the row. Then the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to say what the headings are for each column. So this is for each individual cell. So we use the TH tag. We put whatever the, the name for that column is, and then we close the TH tag. So this is going to print out the text within that cell, but it will be big and it will be bold so that you know it is a title. So we're going to do TH, and we're going to call this one name. We're going to do TH. We're going to call this one age. We're going to do TH. We're going to call this one gender. And we're going to do TH, and we're going to call this shirt size. So this, these will be the cell 
cells in the row. The first cell will be called name, the second will be called age, the third will be called gender, and then the fourth will be shirt size. We're then going to close the row. Now we're going to come down and we're actually going to print out three records in this, uh, this table. So again, we're going to be opening up the table row. We do that just like we did in the title row. But the, the difference here is when we're actually printing out the records, we are going to use TD for the tag instead of TH. So TH is for table header, heading basically, and TD, think of it as for table data. So basically it'll print out the information, but it won't be uh, in bold. So the first, uh, so we have the first record here. So we open up this row, then we open up the first cell. And so this person's name will be Bob. Then we close that cell. We open up the second cell, the age will be 12. We close that cell. We open up the third cell, the gender will be boy. We close that cell, uh, the open up the final cell, that will be shirt size. And so we say this person is a medium and we close the TD tag and then we close the table row tag. So this is the first record. So Bob, 12, boy, medium. We're then going to go down we're going to open up another row. Uh, the first uh, the first cell in this row, the name is going to be Fred. We're going to close that. Now the next thing what I want to show you is whenever you have an empty cell, remember you still have to say that that cell exists. You have to tell HTML that that cell exists. Um, or it'll scrunch everything together. So basically I'm just saying that this is a blank cell. So there's nothing in this particular cell. Let's say for whatever reason, we don't know what the age is. We go to the third cell, open up with TD, boy, close TD, open up the fourth cell. Uh, we say he has a large t-shirt size and we close, uh, we close that particular cell. Then we close the row. Right, so basically it's gonna print out Fred, blank for age, boy, large. Then we're gonna come down, and as I've talked about before, in the HTML world, more or less, let me say more or less, uh, white space doesn't matter, right? So especially when you're creating these tables to begin with, it may get a little bit confusing uh, trying to look at a table kind of vertically like this. You may wanna look at a table more, more horizontally to, to really grasp what you're doing. And so what I wanna show you with this record for Sue is you can just literally just print all of this out on one line. HTML doesn't care about this. So we open the table row here, we close the table row here. And then we do the TD, Sue, close TD. So that's for the name. TD, uh, 10, close TD, that's for the age. TD, girl, close TD, uh, that's for the gender. And TD, small, close TD, that is for the t-shirt size. So especially when you're getting used to actually writing out tables in HTML, this might be an easier way to get your brain around it and make sure that you're putting all the tags where you're supposed to put the tags. Because again, it can get a little confusing with all these different tags. Uh, and then finally, what we're going to do is we're going to simply close the table tag, and now this will all be a table in HTML. If we go over and take a look, we can see that this uh, table.html file has been saved to my desktop. Let me just do save, make sure this is saved. Uh, and then we're going to double click and now it's going to open up in our web browser. And basically everything that we've printed out in HTML will now show up in the web browser as a table. Uh, so we open up the table, so that opens up the table. We have the caption, student list, closed caption. So we can see student list is here. That's the caption for this table. Uh, then we're going to go down, we're gonna create our first row. Then we're gonna use TH, table heading. Again, so basically for each individual cell, not only will it print out the text, but it will be bold, it'll be a heading, right? So we can see name, age, gender, and shirt size, and we can see in bold, name, age, gender, and of course, shirt size. Uh, then we're going to go down, we're going to go to the first record. Again, we open up the row, so that opens up the row. TD Bob, close TD, Bob, 12 boy medium, 12 boy medium, and then TR, we close, we close that row. Then we go down to Fred. So we open the row for Fred, uh, name is Fred. Again, the blank, so blank is now in that cell. Boy, large, boy, large. Again, to go down just to show you where HTML really just does not care about that white space. Sue, her record is all just printed out on one line, but as you can see here, as far as when it shows up in the web browser, it just, it looks exactly like the other records for Bob and Fred. Again, just a bit of an example here to show you where you don't wanna leave uh, blank spaces for cells. So let's say instead of doing TD uh, and then blank and then close TD, let's say I did that. If I did file, save, and then I do a refresh here, 
you can see that basically, again, HTML has literally no intelligence. HTML is not going to try to figure out what you're trying to do. It's just going to do exactly what you tell it to do. So if you don't define a blank cell, then it's just going to simply shift everything over. So all you need to do is make sure you actually open and close cells. And again, even if these cells are blank, you do want to make sure that you have defined them. And there you go. Uh, what I just showed you is how I would suggest you should be writing your HTML documents is basically, uh, you know, print, write out your HTML document, save it as a .html. And then what I would do is open up the document in a web browser. And as you're typing things out every once in a while, you know, do five, go up, do file, do save, and then go over and do a refresh on your web browser and verify what your, the HTML code that you're writing out actually looks like what you think it's supposed to look like. Uh, you may run into some issues you're not expecting. Again, big problems you can run into is, let's say you just, you just get a little addle-brained and so you just start using TH for like everything. Imagine, imagine if you printed out like, I don't know, 20 records or something and you had used TH instead of TD. That can be a bit of a pain to clean up. So if you're just sitting there and you're typing everything out, every once in a while you hit refresh, and then you've only done that for a couple of records. You don't have to go through and figure out how to replace it uh, for in an entire document. Uh, I would argue, especially when you're new, you should have an H the, the HTML document open up in a web browser. Again, save every once in a while, hit that refresh, verify how it looks in the web browser is more or less how you're expecting it to look. But that's really all there is to tables. So there you go. Now you know how to create tables within HTML. Uh, you will notice that the table that I showed you was very basic, was very bare. You didn't have borders. You didn't have any lines. You didn't have any of that. Uh, back with HTML4, you would actually uh, type in additional code to create borders and all that type of thing uh, in your table. But we're now in the HTML5 world. And so in the HTML5 world, all of that should be done with CSS. Again, do remember uh, when you're building a website, you're going to be dealing with a number of different coding languages. HTML simply gives you the bare bones of your site. Again, think of it as the foundation, think of it as the beams, think of it as the rafters, and then you use CSS, and CSS is the paint and the carpet and everything that makes it look pretty. Uh, so if you want a border for your table, you would do that in CSS. If you want to actually show all the lines, you would do that in CSS. If you want to deal with spacing, so you want to make sure, let's say, every single column on your table is of identical size. You would do that in CSS. Uh, so we will have a series of classes in CSS and I'll explain that. But again, in the HTML world, this just gives you the basic structure of how, it'll, of how it will be on your, your document. And then you would use CSS to make it pretty. Again, tables are very easy. Again, you just got to open tags and close tags. Uh, the only place you can run into a problem is, again, there's a lot of tags to deal with. Again, imagine, imagine if you had 10 columns in a row and then you had 30 records, right? That's there, there's a lot of space there for you to for you to screw up and fat finger and not close a tag or not open a tag or something like that. There's just a lot of tags to be dealing with. Again, not hard, not complicated. You just got to make sure you keep track of all those tags. That's why I would highly recommend uh, you create your table, you open your table, you close your table, you create your 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 heading rows, and then at that point I would save your document is .html, and then I would open up it as a web browser, and as, as I was going through adding records, I would just hit save and refresh every once in a while, just simply to verify that how the document looks is how I expect it to look. Again, you know, you figure 10 rows by, by yeah, or 10 columns by 30 rows, that ends up being uh, 300 cells that you have to populate if you're doing that manually, if you're not simply printing that out using uh, some kind of script like PHP, you know, that, that can be a lot of time and effort and you might screw something up accidentally if you're not paying attention. So that's all there is uh, to tables in HTML. As always, I enjoy doing this class. I look forward to seeing the next one. If you like the content that I create, please think about going to elinethecomputerguy.com and becoming a member or donating. Please understand that all the educational videos are in front of the paywall. That includes the videos, that includes the notes, the diagrams, and the code example. All of that is freely available and in front of the paywall. But if you want to watch opinion videos or if you want to be able to comment, you do need to become a member. Membership is $5 a month or $60 a year and gives you access to those 
opinion videos and the ability uh, to comment. If you don't want to become a member, you just want to give a one-time uh, donation, there is also a donate button where you can do that. Please understand, in order to provide the education that I am, it does cost money. Servers cost money, equipment costs money, travel costs money. All of these things cost a reasonable amount of money. And the fact of the matter is, is YouTube's advertising program no longer supports creators the way that it used to. So if you want to these classes to continue to stick around and you find them to be valuable, please think about either becoming a monthly member or donating a few dollars for this project.